Yeah. Okay, guys, let's get going. The, we've shared it in those of you that have been hopping on for the first time, you want to go back and look at Monday and Tuesday for sure. You want to look at Monday and Tuesday because God spoke to me. You know, you'll see so many people out on social media because uh, this is our way for all of us, those of us men and women of God, to get our message out, to stay connected to the people. So everybody, every joint fitness supply, so everybody has a part. So the part that God has given me is to deal with the, the mind, the soul, uh, when we are when we are positioned and when we're walking in the things of God, we need to know our mind has to be renewed. We've got to be able to flow with God in the total part of our being. This is what Paul prayed, that we may be sanctified, spirit, soul, and body. So let's go before the Father in prayer. Lord, we come before you this morning. And what you have given me this morning, this week, the fresh download, the heaven's perspective, the way you've allowed me to see how the prophetic clock of God and what you are doing in the lives of not just your people, but in the nations, in the earth, your prophetic, prophetic clock, your prophetic timetable. Father, we pray that as the word goes forth this morning, that people's lives will be transformed, challenged, that there'll be a mental mindset shift and that we will understand the kingdom pattern of going from surviving to thriving. We thank you for the mental shift. We thank you that we see this repeated pattern, this repeated pattern. We see this universal repeated pattern throughout the word of God. And Father, because it's a kingdom principle and a kingdom pattern, we know that we can embrace it. We can anchor in it because you are a God of principle. And Father, we stand upon it. We adhere to it. We acknowledge it. And we pray that eyes, that the eyes of the understanding of everybody watching whatever time of the day and whatever is replayed. And even for those that will hear the voice of God to a specific people to share it with, specific uh, platforms to, to get it out, to get your word out, to get your word out, to get your message out. For our minds, for us, for us to be shifted, that our soul salvation, our soul deliverance our mental shift. Father, we see in the word of God and we, and we know that the Holy Spirit, you bring it out even more. We're seeing the triune part being of man, how after the fall, there was not the harmony working together, all three part beings, spirit, soul, and body, not the harmony like it was before the fall. But now because of Jesus, that union, we have access to that alignment once again, that we will not be the type of leaders and the type of believers that are spiritually, spiritually mature, know the spiritual language, the spiritual things, but then not mature in our mind and our soul and our choices and our character and our actions. And then we would not be the type of believers that, that are intellectually developed sound in our mind, but then our bodies out. We want there to be an alignment, Father God. Spirit, soul, and body. First Thessalonians 5.23. And in times like these, you need strengthened soldiers. You need people that are equipped for battle. People that are in alignment with you in every arena of our lives, in every tripart of our being. We thank you for this word to speak, not just for the, to the spirit, but to the soul as well. In Jesus' mighty name. And let's say amen. When I tell you it's going to be a word, it's going to be a word. Good to see you, Miss Evans. I see you over there. I see you, Terry. Okay, guys, we're going to go to the book of Esther. Let me show you some of the things that God showed. Every day I told you we're going to bring different people, go throughout the word of God. I see you, Cecile, that have gone from, see you, Angela, gone from thriving, excuse me, from surviving to just, so just surviving to thriving. When we look in the life of Esther, we're going to go a little bit deeper and we're going to go back and revisit Mr. Joseph because after I finished, the Lord began to show me some different things with Joseph that was even, even, even more powerful. When you look at the stages, what God did in Esther's life, you know, they, we say that each person, and we're going to parallel this with where we've been in our walk, where we are in our life right now and where God has taken us as a people, as a nation, as a church. Now you need to stay with me. You got to stay with me this morning. The first part that you see here in Esther's life is that Esther 
first has to deal with her identity. She first has to deal with her identity because she is actually Hadassah, uh, poised and disguised as Esther. So one of the things that I believe that God is doing, even right now, everything I'm going to share, what I'm sharing, I want you to remember, we're looking at it from three perspectives. As I teach this morning, and I'm talking about, we, we're going to teach from a high table this morning. This is not, this is not milk. This, this, this teaching is for grown folks. And uh, those of you that are on Facebook, you got to kind of, if I move this, I may mess up because I'm trying to get as close as I can with looking at the two cameras here. But we, as I speak, we, I'm speaking to the nation. I'm speaking to you as individual. And this word is for the church. So let me give it again. This is a prophetic word for you as an individual. It's a prophetic word for the church. And it's a prophetic word for the nation. So let's start out here. The first thing with Esther, as we see, God is dealing with identity. He's literally transforming her identity. She is no longer Hadassah, but she takes on a different identity in order to fulfill what God has for her. I'm going to take a real chance and move this a little bit closer. That's the perfectionist part. I can't help it. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay. And what she does is, and this, and think about us as a as a people, as an individual, God transforms our identity so that we can take to prepare us and equip us for the assignment. I mean, you think about uh the role and the position that the church has taken over the last decade, over the last century. And like now, God is doing it once again. He's causing us to look at our identity. We've allowed, stay with me, we've allowed identity issues to creep into the church. We've allowed identity crisis to creep into the church, to creep into our nation. We've allowed identity struggles, identity questions, identity issues, identity morality to creep into the White House, to creep into the nation, to creep into legislation. We've allowed it to creep into the schools. We've allowed it to creep into entertainment. We've allowed it to creep into the church. We've allowed, and, and once it's a issue, a challenge and a crisis with identity in the church, then it's gonna, you're gonna see it played out in the nation. But where does it begin first? The identity challenge is with the individual. And then it moves into the ecclesia, into the church, and then it moves into the nation and then from the nation to the world. So God now deals with her about her identity. But we're still talking about going from surviving to thriving. We haven't changed that one bit. Now God, trans he allows her identity to be transformed to fulfill an assignment. However, the core uh, nature and her covenant uh, name, her, her covenant purpose, her covenant true identity is still there. She's taking on this um, different posture to fulfill the purpose that God has for her. So God has to write this down. In her transformation of her identity, he has to reposition her. The reason why he's allowing the transformation of the identity and the name is because of the assignment and the office because he has to reposition her. He does the same thing with um, uh, Belshazzar, he, excuse me, he does the same thing with, with Mishael, Hananiah, the Hebrew boys. He does the very same thing. He does where he takes on, they take on a different name, uh, a different identity. Then we see as she is her identity, once she allows God to deal with her in the identity part of her life to reposition her, it's not about her. It's going to go even deeper. It's not about her. He begins, I'm just going to go back and forth, guys, okay? I'll look at you for a while, Facebook, and I'll look at you for a while, uh, Periscope. After he deals with her identity, the next thing he begins to do is to prepare her. And all of it is for her purpose. And in the beginning stages of her life, while all this is going on, I need you to not miss this because it's right where we are today. It's right where we are today. It's right where we are in God's prophetic clock his prophetic timetable. He is repositioning her. He is dealing with her identity 
in a time of serious crisis. We will call it today ethnic cleansing. It will be called ethnic cleansing. We're going to go back and review some of this tomorrow because, I mean, there's so much in here. There was one by the name of Haman that the enemy had already planted the seed in the mind of Haman to annihilate the Jews, to get rid of the Jews. And so God is now repositioning this orphan girl. He's dealing with her identity. He's repositioning her. He's aligning her. He's aligning her for his purpose. And so in the beginning stages, when you look at it, she starts out in a life of surviving. First of all, the survival mentality before the shift takes place, she's definitely a, a survival mindset because we know she's an orphan girl. Her parents are not there in her life. Her parents are perhaps dead. She's raised by this relative. So they're, they're not raised with elite means. She's raised with just the probably perhaps maybe sometimes not even the basic essentials. Oh, we going somewhere this morning. And so now she's gone from this kind of life. But then she has, God has allowed a person, the relative, to be her steward. That she learns accountability. And he's a man of prayer and fasting. He's a man of seeking God. I feel your presence right now. Remember, we're talking to you as an individual. We're talking to the church and we're talking to the nation. And so now God allows the mentorship, the tutelage, the tutelage, the tutelage of her relative, of her uncle to teach. So by him being a man of fasting and praying, pay attention to this, by him being a man of fasting and praying, fasting and praying was not foreign to Esther. Fasting and praying was not uncharted territories. Fasting and praying was the atmosphere that was conducive for her maturity and her growing. And it became a part of what she was used to. It's like, you know, you can't grow oranges in Alaska. You can't grow apples in the desert. So she, her, her core being was groomed in an atmosphere of seeking God. So as Esther begins to allow God to deal with her in her identity. And I remind you, this is the thing that's so powerful. It is the relative that starts preparing her for her destiny. He now starts because he's listening to God and he sees the plight of the nation and he knows that the positioning and the role of what would be the church today, but it was the children of Israel then, God has to reposition his people. He has to raise up a voice. He has to raise up a deliverer. He has to raise up a deliverer to realign and bring things back to the to the assignment and to the purpose that God wants him. And Esther is just the is the vessel that God is using. During this time as God is repositioning Esther, she starts out with, with just surviving mentality. And now there's getting ready to be a mental shift to go from surviving to thriving. As he's preparing her to be God's voice to the nation, God's voice to his people. But then first God starts dealing with her. He starts doing the work in her He's going to do a work as a result of her obedience and what he finished when he finishes with this is going to be a work in God's people. But then it's going to be, you're going to see that the thriving part is a work in the entire nation of what we know today as Iran or Persia. So one of the first things God does is he allows uh, Mordecai to help acknowledge, to wake up her prophetic destiny, to unlock it. I like to say it this way. He unlocked her prophetic destiny of her so that she can begin to understand that it was not about her. But as he's beginning to prepare her, uh, as she's being awakened to what God has for her, she doesn't understand that, you know, Mordecai had to be a man that was hearing from God because I believe that he had to, God was working through Mordecai and he's done, done the same things in our life as in your life. He starts unfolding your purpose. He starts unfolding your assignment little by little by little, by little, you start getting a little more understanding, a little more understanding. So in the beginning stages, the first thing Mordecai does is he begins to deal with her, her preparation. So he's the one that got her ready for the pageantry. So there's this great big pageantry. Look at God's prophetic timetable. It's all lined up. Look at God's prophetic timetable that the previous leadership, meaning uh, Vashti, the previous leadership, the previous position, she's actually dethroned. She's Her position has been dismantled. She's been beheaded. And, you know, I'm not going to look at the cameras anymore. I'm just flowing prophetically. 
So now there's a vacuum in this position. So God has removed the mindset of a Vashti. He's removed the mindset of rebellion. He's removed that spirit. And there's a place on the throne, in the throne. There's a seated place that has now been created for Hadassah or Esther. Could it be that God is the one that allowed the rebellion in um, Vashti's life, uh, how she to create a place for Esther to move in? And so at the same time now, because there's a place that needs to be fulfilled, there's a vacuum there, there's now pageantry. And the king is now seeking. The king is now seeking. I'm here to tell you right now, there is a vacant position for you as an individual. There is a vacant position for the church as a people. There is a vacant position in our nation. And there's a vacant position in the world. There is a void because of the iniquity of man and the iniquity of the mindsets. And so much has been allowed. What was once a placeholder, what was once a space for God's virtue, God's standards, God's principles, that now has become a void place. And God says, I'm going to raise up my people. Give me a second. <clears throat> I'm going to raise up my people. <clears throat> and as God raises up his people, I preached so much yesterday. Give me another second. <clears> Throw <throat> this dry. When he raises up his people to be positioned there, you don't just get position. She has to be prepared. So what God is doing to the church right now, in that void position, because man has done things his own way. Even in the church, she, the church has gone her own way. The nation has gone its own way. The world has gone its own way. We have gone our own way. God says, in order to fulfill this position, this void, this place, to do what I want to do in my prophetic clock and timetable, you must be prepared. You don't just roll up in there any kind of way you want to. So now look at some of the first things that God begins to do as he's preparing Esther. You know, I, I begin to look at things this morning. I said, Father, you have people with different assignments that's out there in all these different social media platforms. But, you know, you've always used me to do the practical application. You've always used me to deal with the life applications so that we can be more effective in prayer. We can be more effective in legislation. We can be more effective in business. We can be more effective in our home because until we get it together up here, in here, until we get it together, we can't even be the we can't even be the people that's ready. We can't even be meet for the master's use. Cause God, there's still so much that there are people in leadership, you all. There are people in leadership. There are people in the they've been saved for years. They've been in the they've been in church. I'm not gonna say the kingdom. They've been saved for years, but there's still things mentally, the mindset has never shifted. They're still trapped in cycles that repeat themselves over and over and over and over again. And God says, I can't take you to this next position. I can't take you to this next place. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord will not always strive with man. And God is dealing with us in, in, in arenas of our lives, perhaps some of that have never allowed God to go in those cracks and crevices before. I decree that God in your life and in every last one of these areas, we're going to stop and pray Right now, the first two things we talked about is identity and purpose. Identity and purpose. I did, and then with that purpose is preparing. We see that in Genesis 1, 26 through 28. God says, I created you in my image and in my likeness. That's identity. That's see you, Bridget. And then he goes on to say, to have dominion. Well, that's purpose. So it's identity, purpose, identity, purpose. With Esther, identity, going from Hadassah to Esther. Okay? Purpose. She's brought into the brought into the palace to replace the position of Vashti, identity purpose. Look at the pattern, identity purpose. So here, I pray right now in your life that the way you've seen yourself and the persona, the character, the nature, the identity, everything that's made you, you, I pray for the maturity level in your life right now. I pray for mental shifts and transformations that you will not be stuck in a rut, that we will cry out to God and say, Father, change us. Father, we seek you. 
Father, we decree that we will cry out to the Lord and seek you till you reign righteousness in our life and that we will break up our fallow ground and that the fallow ground will be broken up. Come on and pray with me. We'll be broken up as a nation. We'll be broken up in the church. Break up the fallow ground and the mindsets of our life. Let it begin with us. Let it move into the church. Let it move into our nation. Let it move into the world. Those things that subliminally that we had influence and we've been up under the influence of that we don't realize that it's begin to try to shape our identity, thus diverting the purpose that God has for our life. But right now we realign ourselves into the apostolic, prophetic, end time role of God, plan of God, purpose of God. We align ourselves with the timetable of God. We align our mind with the timetable of God. We align our nature, our decisions, our choices, our mindsets with the prophetic clock of God so that we may be meat for the master's use. Father, I pray for your individual people and that you're doing the work in our life individually. Lord God, you're doing a work in our life. Lord God, you got us at a place, Father God, where we're having to learn to trust you like we never trusted you before. Father God, we thank you that you've allowed everything to shut down and be still, that we may be still and know that you are God. Father, we thank you that the same God that allowed the raven to feed the prophet and the same God that allowed the brook not to dry up. Father, we thank you that during this time of you dealing with us, dealing with our purpose, our identity, during this time of being still and knowing that you are God, during this time of transforming our mindset, transforming our identity. Father, we know that you are sufficient and no good thing will you withhold from those who walk up rightly. Father, I pray for our individual life. Oh God, and I pray for the church and I pray for our nation. And Father God, we pray for the nations of the earth that this whole kingdom pattern, this whole process of going from surviving to thriving, that your will, because the whole part of the thriving, the thriving part is that your will will be done in the earth. That is the thriving part, that we will be fulfilling your will in the earth, that we go from just surviving and realizing that it's not about us, that our life is not our own, for we are dead and our life is hid with Christ in God. Let's move on, man. Uh, the thing is, it's like when he gives me something, it's so, <laughs> can I tell you guys, we just, we, <laughs> ah, this is so much here. I feel like pastor with the legal pad and all that stuff, like, we're going to probably have to break it up into three different days, okay? So now as God is beginning, as God is dealing with the identity, the purpose, and the preparation, well, the preparation stage is found in Esther 2 verse 12. Write this down. I see you, Professor. Esther 2 plus 12. Esther 2, second chapter, 12th verse. Go there very quickly. Esther, second chapter, 12th verse. Here, we see that for 12 months, six months and then another six months, for 12 months, you see it broken up. He starts dealing with a portion of her life is dealing with the soaking in the oil. Said so all is symbolic of the Holy Spirit and then perfumes the fragrance of what's coming forth out of her. During this preparation stage in Esther 2 verse 12, we see that she also not only had to deal with pay attention. And remember, every time I talk to you, as I'm teaching this morning, as I'm speaking into the nation this morning and speaking, let me just share with you. I remember back in the days with the first Gulf War when Yolanda and myself, I don't think Val was with me then when we went into Iraq. No, no, it was uh, Turkey. We were in Turkey. No. You know the guys. We were in Kuwait. We were in Kuwait. I knew it was the Persian Gulf. And you could, we went up to the Kuwaiti Towers and you could look over into uh, the whole Persian Gulf. You could look, you could, we went up far enough, you could, we could pray across over into Iraq, which was Babylon. We could pray over into and release missiles into uh, Iran, which is Persia. And there were all kind of threatenings coming from Saddam Hussein at that time. This is the first Gulf War, guys, the first Gulf War. And we, as we went up into the towers and we took a team of core leaders, apostolic leaders in Kuwait, and there were a lot of Americans that were living in Kuwait in time, many in the military. And we went and began to decree from those towers that every single missile that would be launched 
every weapon formed, every missile launched from Iraq, Babylon, towards Kuwait, that those missiles will be dismantled, they'll be nullified, they'll be non inactive, not functioning properly, and we begin to speak and release it into the nation, release the prophetic word into the region. I'm here to tell you this morning, you can think that I'm just teaching this one, you can think that it's just, we just another one of those voices that are out there on Periscope, Facebook, Instagram, people of God, what is happening on the internet, on the airways, that the word of the Lord is flooding the airways and it is covering the earth as the waters cover the sea. More word is going forth on the airways. The airways that were once transmitting and carrying pornography, transmitting and carrying uh, uh, profane and de de degrading uh, rap words, degrading women. The, the, the airways that was once carrying this immorality and perversion that was once carrying so watch this guys they, they, they can't they can't go film uh Atlanta housewives right now they can't go film some of the things that have been iniquity and we have people in the body sitting around watching this stuff like Atlanta housewives and and uh, I don't know because I'm not living in that whole realm but watching stuff like um I can't think of some of the stuff that Brandy's told me the name of these shows and stuff it's just total perversion uh, you know, Queens of the South and all this kind of stuff. And church folk start taking on the identity of what was being transmitted in the airways. So God is now shut down, not just Hollywood, but shut down what was once transmitting this into the airways. And then once it got transmitted from the United States, from Atlanta, Georgia, from um, uh, Hollywood, it then reached its way into South Africa. Then now South Africa has their own version of South African, and they just took on the same uh, perversion. And not just South Africa, it started going all into Nigeria. It was it started. Then they started doing, uh, mimicking the same thing in Kenya. I started watching it because I'm in the nations all the time, and I see this flooding. But God now is allowing His people called by His name. They're, they're, the internet, they, they're right now, they haven't have broader uh, bandwidths and stuff like that to be able to accommodate. And you guys know that yesterday, um, Facebook, they literally were shutting down live, all of the live uh, posts so that they can be able to accommodate uh, just the, the, the weight of, of everybody being on the internet. And so God is now reclaiming that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So there's a principality right now that is being hit. We are hitting him. We're hitting the airways. Like right now, we're broadcasting. We're broadcasting. We're not limited. We're speaking and declaring the word of the Lord. Are you hearing me this morning? So here in this place uh, where God was repositioning her, he was putting her in this place that had become a void and a vacuum place, just like in the church, reclaiming his purpose, aligning her. He's preparing her. So during this preparatory stage, that's where we was, the six months of being in the oil and being in and learning protocol. She had to learn uh, diplomacy. She had to learn etiquette. Write this down. During this time, God had to begin to teach her diplomacy, etiquette, protocol. She had to learn diplomacy and etiquette and protocol. She had to learn international diplomacy. She had to learn how to, and so during this stage, write this down, don't miss this, don't miss this, don't miss this, don't miss this. During the preparatory stage, and remember, as I'm talking about Esther, we're really talking about your life. We're talking about the church. We're talking about the nation, and we're talking about what God is doing in the nations of the earth. During this preparatory stage, when God is doing the work, taking us from surviving to thriving, to fulfill his will from our life to what he wants, to just barely having enough and thinking there's survival and, and, and to, to fulfilling what God has. This first stage he had to do while she was preparing, look at these. He showed me this so clear this morning. He dropped it like this. Shh, 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 shh. There are four stages that he takes us through. Get ready for the four stages. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, Jackie. Get ready, Jean. Get ready, get ready for the four stages. In the preparatory stage, guys, the first thing she had to learn to do while she was going, getting ready for the pageantry, when she was getting ready to be chosen her identity, watch this. 
he, she had to learn how to walk different. And you know, like girls, when they're going through the pageantry, you know, uh, uh, Denya McGee, her daughter, uh, the McGee family, they've had daughters, two daughters, not just one, two daughters that have been in pageantry, Trine and then her sister. And Trine talks to me a lot about what it's been like behind the scenes in pageantry, you guys. So they have to learn to walk a certain way. So what God is doing with us right now in your life, in the church, in the nation, in the nations of the earth, we, he says, you've not been walking right. Your posture has not been right. So I got to teach you how to walk a new walk. She couldn't just sit a certain way and walk. She had to walk differently. God, what's happening right now? Let me tell you what happened last night. And it's been less than a week, guys. Remember, I told you guys about this gangster rapper. Uh, uh, I mean, a real G, a real hardcore gangster. Uh, as they say, an OG called me late, late, late last night and said, I can't, Dr. Bailey, I just called you for some more of your prayer. You prayed for me before. My head is clear now. I'm not going to call any name. He said, I haven't touched any liquor. I haven't touched any drugs. I haven't done this. I found myself acting different. I said, baby, what you're feeling is called the conviction of God. And he said, can you give me some more of your prayer? Okay, I'm here for you. Dr. Bailey is here for you. It's late at night. You're waking me up late at night, but I'm here for you. I don't care what time. As God is dealing with you, yes, let's pray for you right now. And I said, do you do you still use your tongues? Are you still get? Yes, come on. Let's bring them tongues back out. You was raised up in the things of God. So I'm praying in the Holy Ghost with this gangster. He praying in tongues with me. Father, transform him. Transform his identity. Transform his nature. Transform his desires. God is teaching us how to walk different. The church started walking like the world. The nation, a nation that was once a nation under God, uh, what was once a Christian nation, was no longer walking like a Christian nation. She started walking like and wanting like what the other heathen nations wanted. <clears throat> we want everybody to be treated. Uh, you know, we started allowing things in that were contrary to the constitution of the word of God. Our constitution mirrored the biblical constitution. And we started making amendments and amendments and amendments. So God says, I got to teach you how to walk right. You got to come back to me. Hosea 6, come back to me, saith God. He raised up a prophet that said, Israel, come back to me. That's the church. Individual people, come back to me. Your walk has been strayed. Your walk has been perverted. I got to teach you how to walk right. And then after he, they... During the time of preparing in the pageantry, in the pageantry, they teach you how to walk. They teach you how to pivot. They teach you proper posture. She couldn't just slouch. She couldn't just walk any kind of way. But then the other thing God did in these four stages. So the first stage is get your walk right. Then next, she had to learn how to dress different. She couldn't wear the same kind of clothes. She couldn't wear the same kind of garments. So God says, and and your uh, the word of God Whenever it's talking about, like, you know, it talks about a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The Bible talks about uh, in, in, in the epistles, it talks about putting on new garment, the new man and the old taking off the old clothes. Remember, we talked yesterday with Joseph's family. Pharaoh said, don't bring those clothes over here. We have new clothes for them. And then when you get to the book of Revelations, fourth example, fourth example, the Bible says that when we stand before God, the Bible is Revelation 19, the 20th chapter. We are wearing the white linen. We're clothed with white, light, white linen. And that white linen that we're clothed with is the righteous acts of the saints. That means we're wrapped up. We're not being concerned about clothed with a certain designer, this or that. Nobody's thinking about that. We're clothed with the righteous acts, the righteous execution of the saints. Oh my God. So she had to have a different type of garment. So he's speaking to us right now. You need to be clothed with the righteous execution of the kingdom of God. You need to be clothed with the spirit of joy. You need to be clothed. Are you hearing me? Uh, put off the old nature, the old clothing. Take off the poverty mindset. Take away the surviving mindset and put on the garment of praise. Put on the garment. The Bible even says concerning our garment, it says we're clothed with favor. Woo. So she had to dress different. I wish, I hope it's blessing you as much as it blessed me. So now we got to put on a different type of garment. The next thing she had to do when she was going through the pageantry and to prepare her to be queen, she had to learn to eat different. 
So there, you know how it is when I remember just most recent when we were in, Seal knows where I'm going with this, when we were in the um, Royal Buffer King Empire, their kingdom there, and we're in the, at the, uh, we're eating with the queen. We're at the table eating with the queen. And of course the table, you know, you got all the proper cutlery and, and you know, this type of fork and this type of fork and this type of spoon and this type of cup and this type of sauce and this type of bowl and this type of, and so the, 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 you got to learn what proper utensils to eat with. And it was twofold here. It wasn't just learning the proper etiquette at the table to know which utensils to eat with the diet itself. God says, my people who are called by my name. We've been eating off of wrong tables. We've been eating off of tables of carnality. We've been eating off of tables of lethargy. We've had people in leadership that are men and women of God that are supposed to be the voice of God that have been eating off the table of carnality, eating off a table of perversion, eating a wrong food, a wrong diet, partaking. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say, Daniel 1 verse 8, when Daniel was going through his kingdom pattern preparatory stage as he was doing the same thing fasting and praying and Daniel 1 and 8 says that Daniel purpose in his heart that he would not eat the king's portion he would not eat the king's dainties he would not eat the sweets and the alluring appetite and the alluring addictive uh you know like people that have a sweet tooth they, 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 their sweet tooth just pulls them. They just got to have it. And it's not any nutrition. It just satisfies the taste. It just satisfies the sweet tooth. And Daniel said, I'm not eating that. I will not eat off that table. Because if I eat off that table, I'll become like them. I don't want that diet. I don't want to eat from that table. I don't want to be addicted to that sugar. So God says, Daniel says, I purpose in my heart, Daniel 1 verse 8, that I will not eat what they eat. And then by the time you get to the New Testament, Paul begins to teach, beware, do not eat things that have been offered to idols and that of blood. Uh, that I mean, God says you've got to eat different, even spiritually. Some of you have been eating off the wrong table. The church has been eating off the wrong table. The nation has been eating off the wrong table. The world has been eating off the wrong table. God says, come back to me. He says that 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 he himself is sweeter than the honey in the hand of God. The bread of heaven. Come and eat from the bread of heaven. Come and eat from the bread of heaven to prepare for the lamb, the supper of the supper of the lamb. Eat from the bread of heaven so that you can be prepared for the supper of the lamb. That you will eat from my table. You will, Jesus says, my meat, my diet, my nutrition, my table, my substance is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. John 4th chapter. So God says in this process with Esther, she's got to eat different. Sometimes people just eat out of tradition because this is where my mama went to church and big mama went to church and we ate off this table. I heard somebody say the other day that they're not getting fed at this church, but they just go there because of this. I'm like, what? I've never, ever, ever played around with what table I eat off of. Some of you right now, you're eating off of a table that, now pay, this is for somebody. I don't know who it is, but it's somebody. When you are a baby, when you are a baby, you're nursing from your mother and when you are a baby like the type of nutrition and the type of diet like you, you you're having the bible talks about that that you go from the the milk and to meat so when you're shifting from milk of surviving to the meat of thriving the milk of surviving milk is just surviving just keeping the baby alive the baby doesn't have a choice the baby's taking meat then the baby go i mean excuse me the baby's taking milk then the baby goes to soft food. And in some cases, the mother eats the food, chew it up, break it down, and then give it to the baby. And then, you know, some have the processes and stuff like that. Processes where you take the food and you break it up and then you have baby food. So a soft diet. Some of you are supposed to be eating meat by now. You're supposed to be eating off a prophetic, apostolic, mature. Watch this. A table that holds you accountable, a table that holds you that is requiring discipline, a table that requires accountability, a table that requires transparency, a table that requires productivity, a table that's not going to put up with your stuff, a table that says these, these patterns that your life has set for you, that has caused you to be trapped in those patterns that your life has set for you, that have become strongholds, that have caused you not to 
to yield and to produce and to be mature like you should be because you've been eating off the wrong table. You've been eating, you've been still taking that soft food. And God says, you need to now be eating off of a more mature table, a, te a table that requires more, a table that will give more nutrition, a table that has more protein, a table that, are you hearing me? That's going to provide the omega-3 that you need, a table that's going to provide, are you hearing me? The things that you need so that you can be whole and be strong and a table that will build up your immune system and a table that will have antioxidants and a table somebody need to hear me this morning a table with a high fiber diet to keep the body with the body so the nation has been eating off soft food uh has been eating from a table that that gave it the fulfillment of the taste and gave it and it, it fed the sweet tooth it fed the flesh it fed the passion it fed the entertainment it fed the egos and God says, I'm getting ready to touch every last bit of it. And I've, I've been hearing this and I see it. I see it. The sports realm, he touched it. The entertainment realm, he touched it. And the banking realm, he touched it. Everybody that's, that's just been eating off a table that satisfies them. I was just watching on Saturday and on Sunday. Guys, you know where I live. I, my house it sits right up over Donald Trump's estate. And I was looking how on Saturday and Sunday... This place was packed with people and you could hear the music from my deck and it was kind of like the Titanic where, um, and no, I'm not talking about the president. I'm just talking about the function that was happening there. And you could hear the music and people just whining and dining and dancing, just like nothing even going on. I'm like, what? We're not even supposed to be gathering people. How in the world they got a different set of rules over there? And like, I was like, it's just like eating, drinking and being merry, the Bible says, because people want to satisfy their flesh. People want to satisfy their flesh. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter who's put in detriment. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to go further to say some people are not going to like this. But when the nation is saying that for right now, shut it down so that there cannot be a spread. How can you say I'm going to go against the government and do what I want to do? That's not spiritual. No, that's I believe this is a mandate from God to be still. I think this is a mandate from God to hear from him so we can start eating off the right table. When the when we as an individual cease to eat off the right table, cease to take a more mature diet. Some of you, you your prayer language is like it was 10 years ago. Your prayer commitment was like it was 10 years ago. Your word time is like it was 10 years ago. You don't pull out any type of tools. Come on, be honest. You're not pulling out. You're not looking at any type of W.E. Vines. You're not looking at concordance. You're not looking at olive tree, getting down in there into the meat of the word, digging that word out, pondering it, meditating it. You still just living off of what you were getting on Sunday morning. But God says, I want you to, like with Esther, she had to eat from a different table. She had to eat different. And it's not just what she ate, but the way she ate. I'm getting ready to go deeper now. It's not just what we eat, but the way we eat. God says, I'm requiring a whole ship. I'm doing this. What the enemy think he means for bad, I'm doing this. South Africa, you want to follow and mimic everything America's doing. Nigeria, you're mimicking things. Kenya, you're mimicking things. The nations are mimicking things. God says, okay, so you're going to mimic them? And guess what? You get ready to mimic the shutdown, the lockdown. You get ready to mimic the same challenges that they're facing. You get ready to mimic the same thing. You get ready to go through the same thing. You look to them as your role model. Remember with Israel, they said, we want a king. We want a king. We want a king. And he says, no, you think you want a king. You think you want to mimic them. You think you want to be like them. You don't want what they want. What I have for you is better than a king. I want to guide you. I want to rule you. I want to show you. I have a higher plan for you. I have a higher plan for you than just to be a king. You want to go from... What I have to, what the heathens want. You want to go from my way to the heathens' way? He says, nothing's, nothing supersedes me. Nothing out trumps me. You want to be governed by a heathen nation? And you're going to, he says, you're going to pay taxes. And they're going to send your sons to war. And they're going to take your daughters. He said, you'd rather have that than me? And so he says, turn around, repent. Repent is to change your way of thinking. Come back to me. Come back, hunger for me again. Thirst for me again. Be still and know that I'm God. I want to teach you how to walk right. I want to teach you how to dress right. 
The other thing she had to learn, I want to teach you how to talk right. We haven't been talking right. I, I sometimes listen to the things that come out of people's mouths, guys, that are believers, that are leaders. Some of the things that are being said from pulpits, some of the things that are being taught, some of the conversations that people are even having in times like this right now. Esther had to talk different. She spoke the Hebrew language, but she had to learn a different language, the language of the Persians. She had to learn Farsi. And as she learned Farsi, God allowed that because there was an assignment that he had. Because today, Farsi is still spoken in the United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Farsi is still spoken in Afghanistan. Farsi is still spoken in parts of Iran. It extended all, and in, in Bahrain, Bahrain, Bahrain. It extended all the way from the Persian Empire, that whole kingdom, the thriving part of her assignment, that language, she would have her reach that far. God says, you got to talk different. The word conversation, when she learned how to talk different. In the Hebrew, the word conversation means your manner of life. Oh, Rabbi Kasada. So when God says your conversation must be different, he's saying when she had to learn how to talk different, he's saying your manner of life must be different. Whoso offered praise glorified me and to him that order his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. And to him that orders his manner of life aright, shall I show the delivering power of God. Whoso offers praise, whoso offers praise, whoso offers praise, who orders his mouth aright. The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Uh, we believe, therefore we speak. Your conversation, your conversation, your conversation. What has been the conversation coming from the White House? What has been the conversation coming from your bedroom? What has been the conversation coming from your pulpit? What has been the conversation that's extended to the nations? What has been the conversation that's been carried by the airways? God says, change your words. The power of life and death, uh, the power of life and death is in the tongue. You got to watch what you say. He says, put a guard over your mouth before you see yourself saying things that you shouldn't say. And guys, let me be honest with you this morning. I, Dr. Baby, is not concerned about what she looked like. I'm not concerned about any makeup this morning. I'm concerned about making sure you get this word. Call away from, from London. I see you this morning. God says, you have started desiring an appetite, a palatable appetite for something that's substandard to what I predestined for you. I got to change your palate. I got to change your palate to taste and to thirst and to hunger for me again. I got to change your palate to desire me again. I got to change your palate. Right now, Father, we just pray that you will change the palate of the church, change the palate of my nation, change the palate of the nations of the earth, change our palate first, that we will hunger for you, we will thirst for you, Pastor Meredith, that we will, like, like you said, Apostle, that we will have a relationship with the word of Almighty God, that we will hunger for the word again. And Father, may we never prostitute may we never compromise wanting what the world wants over you that's what israel kept doing they wanted a king they wanted to eat the things that other people ate they wanted to follow after their customs and he says when you follow after their customs you'll end up following after their gods you end up following after their gods and so father give us a kosher appetite again give us a kosher appetite again for you she had to learn how to walk different. She had to learn. And, and that walking part, I thought about this. The word of God says we must walk circumspectly, knowing what the will of the Lord is. That word walk circumspectly, guys, means to walk like you're walking in a landmine. And I, I know what that's like because we've worked, um, I think I just brought the story up the other day. We were working on the border of Thailand. I think I shared it on Monday, on the border of Thailand in Myanmar, which used to be Burma. And it was undetonated lion mines. Me, Val, and Yolanda. You talking about sold out. And these soldiers, you know, they, they work in these undetonated landmines all the time. They just, they know the terrain and, 
And so you got to walk circumspectly. So when you when the Bible talks about walk circumspectly, you just don't walk any kind of way. Like I'm not even thinking about where I'm going to take my foot. I'm not, I'm not. So what God is telling us about your walk, your walk, your walk, your walk. Like take, think and ponder about what you're about to do, where you're about to go, the company that you're keeping. Be mindful of your walk. Be mindful of your way. The priest had to anoint their foot, their toe. The priest, their walk, it represented, when they anointed their foot, it represented their walk, their actions, their lifestyle. God says, what does your walk say? Dr. Price used to say, evidence, evidence. What does your life say? What does your walk say? Sometimes when I'm preparing things, um, like if we can really put stuff on social media or we get ready to put a video together and I have my, you know, my camera roll and I go through that and I said, my whole life, look at my whole life. My walk has been the nations, has been children, has been to lift the poor, feed the poor. My walk has been speaking to governmental leaders. My walk has been to see things legislated in the spirit. That's been my life. That's my legacy. That, and I go right now, every single person under the sound of my voice that is a GLTC graduate, that is a person that's gone to Yugo, that is a person that's done Jamaica for Jesus. I'm going to send this out all over. You guys send it out and share it. You have seen my walk. You have seen a woman that has had a cry and a call to the nation, had a passion for the poor. By now, your life, by now, the legacy should be, be apparent in your walk. You should be reaching more nations than I've ever reached. You should have a greater compassion than I ever had. You should never be satisfied to conform to life as usual, job as usual, essentials as usual. There should be a panting of the heart. I don't understand people that have tasted the sincere milk of the word and you can go from that to just surviving. You can go to that and just a job that pays what? You, you'd rather go for what God has for you and a life of trusting him to a life of trusting a Babylonian system. You'd rather trust a Babylonian system over God. You've sat there and you've seen the heart of God for the nations because the priests wore the stones on the breastplate, which represented the nations of the earth. And you'd rather strip that whole ephod off and say, I want the security of Babylon. But yet in this walk of faith, have, have you ever been forsaken? Right now, how are we going to weather these things? And, and let me just go on to say this. Somebody, I know I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I don't care. If you think for one moment that in 10 more days or seven more days, it's going to be back to life as usual, you know what? Girl, let me tell you, men, women, people, Stevie Wonder can see this. This is not something that's going to just disappear in 10 more days. You've got to have more insight than that. God is shaking us. God is shaking the nation. God is shaking the world. Dr. Baylor, you prophesied and saying that you, we, we praying that this stuff will stop. I didn't say, I'm not trying to tell God how to do anything. All I'm saying to you is if you got any insight at all, God is not through yet. God is doing a work. God is doing a work in South Africa in the hearts and minds of the people. God is doing a work in Jamaica. I got a call from Jamaica yesterday. Every hotel empty. Only 30 beds in the whole nation in the hospital open. God is getting the attention of his people. So then, oh my God, it's got a shot. I, I, guess what? We haven't even gotten but to just one scripture. I got two pages. She had to walk different, dress different, eat different, talk different. Four things. She had to walk different, dress different, eat different, talk different. That was all just the preparatory stage. I haven't even gotten to the six other stages. That was just preparing. And after God began to prepare her, the preparation was to equip her for the purpose of her calling. That's the thriving part. You're thriving. When you're operating in the center of what God called you to do. During this time, I'm kind of jumping ahead. I'll come back. When Esther, in Esther 4 verse 16, when she began to fast and pray to get a strategy from God. We'll do that tomorrow, but I'm just going to land here. That fasting 
was declaring war on her flesh so that she could hear the strategy of God. Because obviously she was not hearing from God. She had disconnected. But when she took those three days of fasting, she reconnected to God again. She reconnected to his purpose. And during those three days of fasting, guys, it wasn't about the Persian silks. It wasn't about the opulence of the palace. It wasn't about the diet of the palace or the etiquette of the palace or the protocol of the palace or the diplomacy of the palace. It was Esther dying to Esther. It was Esther dying to Esther. It was a declare war on your flesh. Right now, God is declaring war. He's allowing us out of an act of our own volition to declare war on our own flesh. It is time to seek the Lord until he rain righteousness upon us. Father, we just come before you and we thank you, almighty God, that you're showing us how to walk different, how to dress different, how to eat different, how to talk different. And this is a part of the process of taking us from surviving to thriving. May we now realize there is no security in a job. There is no security in the banking system. There is no, let's say it this way, no supreme security in a job. No supreme security in a banking system. No supreme security in entertainment. No supreme security in anything. The only supreme security is in you. And we need to grow up. We need to mature more. We need to die to ourselves more. We need to hear from you more. We need to align our conversation with you. We need to have a different palatable appetite. We need to dress different, meaning our, 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 our persona. We don't mean any type of legal, legalism. We need to learn, almighty God, to eat from a different table and to talk different, to mirror and to reflect and to speak the word only, to align our words and to align our thoughts, to come into compliance and alignment with the sovereign will of God. Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit and we'll go out. That whole one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven other points. That, and when I tell you the, everything I just shared this morning was just the introduction. Just the introduction. Father, we thank you that during this process of taking Esther from uh, surviving to thriving, it was a mental shift. You had to do a work in her first. It was a mental shift. Father, we thank you right now. We're praying for the mental shift in the body of Christ. A mental shift in our individual life. A mental shift of trusting you. A mental transformation of trusting you in an arena like we never have before. We make no excuses for trusting you. You allowing us to see the necessities of life. Many of you. Your January month and your February month were not, you didn't, I'm talking to somebody this morning and whenever you're watching this, you did not start your year out right. You allowed the season of the holiday, the holiday seasons to dictate the trajectory of your beginning quarter. But God has given you an opportunity right now, whoever you are, to seek him and to redeem the time that you've lost. During this time of being still, the things that God had it in his heart to speak to you in the beginning of the year, the first 60 days, he's giving you an opportunity to hear his voice again, just like Esther, so that God can do in your life as an individual and speak to you with specificity, very detailed, a gracious design and a divine blueprint for your life. For God is saying that he has engraved you in the very palm of his hand. God is saying you keep allowing your mind to take you down this road. A road that you think is security. A road that you think is sure. But God says, trust me. I'm the only sure thing in your life. 
I'm the only stable thing in your life. I am your only source. God is saying to you today, what have I got to do to prove my love to you? What have I got to do to prove my faithfulness to you? What have I got to do for you to totally trust me? God is saying to that person and those people this morning or whatever time you're watching this, cast not away your confidence. For trusting me has a great recompense of reward. Trust me, saith God, and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. God says you still keep thinking that it's your responsibility to take care of yourself. He says, I made myself responsible to take care of you. He said, you will never be forsaken. You will never beg for bread. And you know, one of the things about God, that as long as you seek provision in an arm of the flesh, Jeremiah 17, 5. He calls it cursed. He said, cursed is the man that seeks his provision in the arm of the flesh. I thank God for the way he orchestrated my life. Pastor Winston says, God can never mismanage your life. Never. He orchestrates every minute detail of your life before you ever want, before you ever knit it in your mother's womb, Psalm 139. He orchestrated every methodical, every logistic molecule of your life. That detail. And you would rather trust in the arm of the flesh than a God that knows your thoughts from afar. Who knows what you're going to think even before you think it. I am not so interested this time of seeking in the mornings. For a professional broadcast with the right lighting and sound. I want this to be an altar. An altar where you come on every morning with me and tell your friends that God will speak to us and realign our thoughts, realign our mind, our decisions, our ways, our walk, our appetite, our talk, our conversation. That we will come back to the center fold of God's will. That he will speak to us and we'll hunger for him again. And it begins individually with us. And it transforms and goes throughout the church. To the nation, my nation, your nation, wherever you are. To the nations. In the name of Jesus. I told you guys. I am not trying to be television perfect. Mm -mm. you're in my sanctuary. You're in my secret place where I meet with God. I welcome you. Let's meet God together. Let it be about him and not about the facade or the image or the veneer or the outward. Nobody's here trying to compete with anybody. Oh, look at your numbers versus her numbers. Who's thinking about that? If there's one person on here and we're journeying together, just one person is worth me getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning to be here. And on that, until next time, let me do this. Everybody that's watching, whenever you're watching, put it on the screen, guys. You guys already put it on the screen. I want you to call me because I don't want it to end right here. Like yesterday, I got a chance when we got off here, I was able to call you. And I was able to just pray with people, minister to them. Because I take this, that's what I was saying, Angela, that's what I'm saying, Cecilia, I take this as ministry. This is equal to me of going out and speaking in a church on a Sunday morning or going to the nations as a missions trip because ministry is people. Ministry is people. So you can reach me at 336-782-1228. I got to get used to my, that's a cell phone that you can call me directly. Put the number on the screen again, 336-728-1228. No, sorry, got it wrong. 336, forget it, 336-782. Help me out, guys. 336-782-1228. I believe that my, first of all, my desire is to connect with you. My desire is to walk with you and to journey together and let's weather the storm together and to strengthen you. My desire is to bring you into a stronger level of accountability. That's my desire for you. Peggy, I see you this morning. You need to make sure you watch the rest of this broadcast because you just hopped on.
Call me at 336-782-1228. I want to pray with your fan for your family. I want to get some free material to you. I have a teaching on the source. We taught it years ago, but I'm not I'm just sending you one piece of that on the source. If you will email me, I will send that to you free. I want to I want you to meditate and listen to that. Uh, all you got to do is email me at patbaileyscope at gmail.com. Pat Bailey Scope at gmail.com. Somebody put it on the screen for me very quick. Pat Bailey Scope at gmail.com. Or you can call me 336-782-1228. I'm asking God to do such a work in our life during this season. Guess what I got? I got news for you guys. We coming out strong. We coming out strong. We coming out strong. We're coming out strong. We're coming out on the other side of this much stronger than who we were when we entered this as a people, as a nation. Also, guys, I want you to make sure you go to my YouTube channel. Thank you, Angela. Uh, see why you need to be in your place? Uh, we needed that. Go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Pat Bailey. I need at least 100 of you today to go to the YouTube channel. Why are we doing that? Because I've come, we're using every single platform to better connect with you. Our television programs, uh, Faith Broadcast Network, are going to be on there every single week. Yolanda's redesigning the whole YouTube uh, platform that we have where you can immediately go on and see the broadcast. Different teachings that we have are going to be put on there. Some of these periscopes are going to be put on there. And then I'm designing it, guys, so it's a witnessing tool for you. Because during this time, this is a powerful way to witness the people that you work with that are working from home. Family members that didn't want to hear anything that you got to say about God, but they listening now. They want to hear everything you got to say about God right now. And so, um, uh, and you can take the link from YouTube and just take it on your phone and just share it. Just share it. Just share it. Just share it. See, the most beautiful thing about this social media piece is it is so non-threatening and non-intimidating. Like, you don't have to worry about rejection. You send the, the 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 video out to them. If they listen to it, they listen. If they don't, you don't ever know whether they listen or not. You pray over it and you send it out. Sometimes I sit up in late night, early morning, and I'm sending videos out, YouTube links out of teachings to all over the world, nations. I'm sending things to Belize. I'm sending things to Eswatini. I'm sending things to Malawi. I'm sending things to South Africa. Just, just sending, just sending. What, what have you got to lose? I mean, what kind of, what kind of struggle is that? So with that YouTube, we want to get you over there. I need you to subscribe. Go right now. I mean, the moment this broadcast ends, give me a pinky, give me a little pinky promise, pinky promise, pinky promise that you're going to go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Pat Bailey, subscribe. And could you do me another favor? Because we want to be able to reach more people. We're using it as a vehicle to get more things out so you can witness the people more and use it as a witnessing tool. We're going to keep it loaded with things for you. When you go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, like, and share. Subscribe, like, and share. the tons of free material that are there. But can you promise me as well that you will take it as your evangelistic assignment for this next week? For seven, the next seven days, five people that you share, go look and find is there's a teaching there called the heart of God. There's so many different things there. share it with at least five people and challenge five other people to subscribe as well. So that they can now share that word to five other people. We get getting the word out, the purpose, getting the word out, getting the word out. Cause we care about you. We're not interested in numbers. We care about you. We care about your growth. We care about your maturity. We care about your productivity. We care about, we care about your growth. We care about your maturity. We care about your productivity. And we care about this being a season that uh, people would not perhaps normally be open to hear. They are hearing. And we want to use every vehicle necessary. We like Malcolm X on this one. By any means necessary. <laughs> okay. So go to YouTube. Promise me that you're going to do this. I'm going to know if you did. And tomorrow morning when you come back on, when we're here in the morning, I want you to say, Doc, I went to YouTube. So let's do this before I hop off right quick. Because I want to stay connected to you. I'm giving you my number. I'm asking you just for a little small thing so we can reach more people. Those of you that are going to go to YouTube right now and subscribe, just say, Doc, I'm, I'm going to YouTube. I got you. I'm going to do it. Let me just see. I'm going to sit here and wait until you do. And meanwhile, while I'm waiting to see those who hop onto YouTube right quick, just promising me that they're going to do it. Go to YouTube, like, share. Yep, subscribe, like, and share. Not just, you got to subscribe first, like, and share. Okay, look at some of you coming on. Okay, okay, I'm trusting you. Pinky shake, pinky shake, pinky shake. Okay, 
Okay, what a word this morning. Guys, that's just the beginning. We got so much more on this one. This is a mini book, I tell you. He's been downloading things just because we've been still and listening to him. Um, the two books that are really along that are, and I know they say they come out backwards when you do this. I don't know. There's nothing we can do about that except put them in front of a mirror. But Women Risk Takers 1, Women Risk Takers 2, we want to give you, uh, get you the download to these so you can be meditating on those. Uh, call the number on the screen. You can call 336-917-2630, 336-917-2630, and we can get these to you electronically. And uh, when things open back up, we can get hard copies to you as well. Got a new book that's coming out, guys. It's called The Filter Factory. Ooh, I'm determined we'll be going, well, we can't go to print, but we'll be going to final edit by the end of this week, by the weekend. And when I tell you that Filter Factory, Filter Factory book is going to help you up here. I'm finding out in the body of Christ, as I get older, a lot of what we call deliverance was people needing just their minds renewed. Just need their minds removed. You can get the devil can't. First of all, the devil can't live in a believer, but you can be oppressed by the enemy. And the manifestations look the same. But even after a house is swept clean, if you don't go fill that, that house back up with the word of God, your situation is going to be seven times worse, okay? So, somebody just is saying good morning. People are coming to me and saying good morning from all over the world. Okay, don't forget to go to your YouTube channel. I want to give you also a free download. I forgot about it. The uh, Trusting in the Source download you got to email me at patbaileyscope at gmail.com or you got to call me at 336-782-1228 and get um, the, the free materials that we have for you. And don't forget to use the YouTube channel to witness to other people. Also, the children. We're going to let you on Saturday. We're going to be doing another um, chat with Auntie Pat, but this is going to be for teenagers and college students. Teenagers and college students where we're going to have one hour. We had kids glued to the screen, glued to zoom and facebook live for one hour we gave parents a one hour break yesterday and those kids were speaking the word we had willie brown who did the, he's a ventriloquist and he had the puppet little witty and teaching the kids about no fear here and how not to be in fear with everything that's going on we had one little girl uh people that are watching uh hadassah her name is hadassah interesting enough her name is hadassah and she's nina's daughter and she has, at the age of eight years old, answered the call of God upon her life. I mean, you talk about convicting you as an adult. She's preached to crowds of 5,000. She, at eight years old, she asked God for 100 kids to be saved. And she, I mean, she, me, she has a passion for kids her age to be reached with the gospel. I got some of my sons and daughters. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be making calls to them today. I'm going to be sending them her uh, videos because she, she has a website. I'll put it up probably tomorrow. And I'm just going to send it. I see this how you minister to people like, here's an 8-year-old. Here's a 12-year-old that's led 5,000 people to the Lord in a crusade. That's, that's done two orphanages, two libraries. She scholarships kids to school. And God has done this in four years of her life. Hadassah the Evangelist. I mean, amazing. 12 years old. She started at 8. God has done this in four years of her life. And I wanted the kids to be able to see that you, that, you, know, you don't have to be old for God to use you. God can use you where you are to reach your own generation. And she was sharing with them. She's ministered in Madagascar, uh, Puerto Rico, Togo. And uh, it's an amazing what God has done with uh, uh, a 12 year old that started at eight and the kids were really blessed by that. Then we played, you know, some little word games and things like that with them. And uh, we had kids, this is the part that's so powerful. We had kids with us from, um, we had over 300 together. We had kids from Belize, uh, Help me out, guys. Belize, Trinidad, Virgin Islands, Guyana, Togo, South Africa. Can't remember the other places, but those are the ones that come off right away. And it was just so, <clears throat> so interesting to just see them all interacting together and just so hungry for the word. And it's amazing the things that kids say. I had so much fun with them. So stay plugged in. We're going to be doing it again because during these times, we want to keep the kids equipped and keep the kids fed as well. And it's an opportunity, a little platform for them to reach their friends and their classmates that are at home and answer their little questions and pray with them and get the word inside of them so they don't have any fear so they can take what they have and share it up because we don't want them to get old and still not having a passion for reaching their generation. So that's all I got for you today. Hop over to YouTube. I'm waiting right away. I'm, I will know right away. Oh, there's somebody said Guyana. Yes. Thank you for coming on as well. Um, go to YouTube. See you in the morning. 
and uh, subscribe, like, and share. And I'm ready to give that download to you. You just got to give me a call or you got to email me at patbaylisscope at gmail.com. You can call the office at 336-917-2630 and ask to speak to Pam. For those of you that would like to partner with us and be a part of the ministry, volunteering, meaning volunteerism, we want to go be a part of what you're doing with what you're helping kids in Haiti, the Child Brides in Malawi, all the different things that we're doing. You'd like to, like, you know, hook up with us and let's go advance the kingdom of God together. I'd like to hear from you. Call me. I'd like to know what God has put inside of your heart so I can help build whatever it is that God placed on the inside of you. Okay. I am out of here. You can see it's the thing about getting all stirred up this morning. Jane, I love you too. You know, I love you, Jane. Jane's my, my ace. She's got my back. Her voice. I want you guys to go. Can you put it on the screen very quickly, Val? Go to hervoice.myshopify.com. Uh, Got to get my cue book. I haven't had one in a while. Her voice at myshopify.com and Val is going to have things out there that you can still literally be doing missions and affecting the lives of we are we just sent money Val just sent money to South Africa yesterday uh, oh guys on this note I gotta share this a little girl uh two little girls Daisy's daughters they were on from South Africa and they were up at 1 a.m in the morning on our um uh chat with Auntie Pat getting the word and all and they um she won the prize at the end she won the end prize and she um Val sent the money over so that the mom can go out and get the slime slime is what she won but it was just so special and so precious there to see that so my point is we're still wiring money and sending money even for the school fees for the kids in Haiti so when you go shop on my shopify.com and believe me Val is doing like those other you notice everybody's got online sales right now motivating people to buy well ours is shopping with the cause ours is providing school fees providing uh clean water adequate housing literacy for because just because this is going on you know just like in the townships of south africa uh one of the orphanages ashton's parents there there he was sharing with us there's ten thousand orphans that need food so some of you that may be watching will connect you directly with them we're not asking you to give us anything but i tell you one of the things in the time of our challenge or famine or scarcity or crisis one of the greatest thing you can do is do like jacob do so in a time of famine to bless someone else. We're not asking anything. We're saying to others. And so all uh, during this time, I want to sow to you. I'm sowing to you during this time. I'm giving to you during this time. Don't forget again to go to myshopify.com. Uh, her voice, her voice dot my shopify dot com, her voice dot my shopify dot com, or call Val at three three six nine four nine. No, no, I'm sorry, got it wrong. Now, it's been a while, guys. 949-793-3537. 949-793-3537. Hope I got it right. Grab Val, put it on the screen. And she's got all kinds of things out there. And you're not just shopping. You're shopping for the cause. You're helping to restore dignity and to help women in emerging countries to be able to provide for their own. Also, too, I would like Val to uh, talk to you with Ashton, get with Ashton's mom today, that if some of the things from her voice, you could take some of the things that, you, that Val is selling on her voice and as you purchase some of the things from her voice, even if it's something small like an outfit, I mean a dress, outfit, whatever, we're going to take some of those proceeds and give them to, oh, Shirley Clark, Shirley Clark just subscribed subscribe to YouTube. See, that's a woman of integrity. She said she was going to do it and she went to do it. And Shirley, can you do me a favor? Can you get five other people to go and do the same so we can reach more people? Um, I'm going to ask Val, uh, put her on the spot. If some of the proceeds of what you buy off of my Shopify can go to those orphans in South Africa, in Actonville, in Soulsville, who after tomorrow, Thursday, when they're going to have the lockdown, will not have food. So as Ashton was sharing it with me, we want to do something to help them. Even though we're having our challenges here, most of us have cupboards that are full. You got stuff in the freezer. We have more than enough. During this time, let's not shut our bowels of compassion. Let's not become stiff-necked and tight-fisted. Like, I'm just going to hold on everything for me. But let's remember those who don't have any access for what we have. And that's in the townships, in the townships of South Africa, in the townships. 
So I've been looking over there at Periscope for the most of the time. Sorry, Facebook, for me not really keeping my eyes on you. But it's not about me looking at you. It's about the word that came forth. I absolutely love you, Shirley Clark. Thank you. Help me to get five other people today to do it. And the rest of you can follow what Shirley, Shirley has done. Go to YouTube and use it as a witnessing tool by sending those links out and those teachings out to other people. I'm out of here, guys. God bless you. Hi, Ricky Brown. Make sure I'm going to give you a wave. But you want to go back and listen to the entirety of this teaching because it was a powerful word, Ricky. Window. What he's saying with YouTube, when they subscribe, click something. I missed that. Can you put it on this screen? Can you type it on Facebook or Periscope uh, versus texting me? Because it doesn't come all the way down. You says when they subscribe, click something. I think he was going to say when you subscribe, click notification. Is that what you're going to say, Wendell? Oh, amen. Pam was talking about what happens with God when you minister to orphans. You take the quickest way to get your prayer answered. That's for sure. Wendell, whatever you were saying, can you throw it on right quick? Because I'm about ready to hop off. I think he was going to say when you go to YouTube and you subscribe, I think you're going to click the notification button. I don't see it yet. Yes. <laughs> okay, Wendell. Wendell said that's our IT guy uh, that that uh, uses his skills and his uh, trade his skills to bless the ministry. Uh, he says, click the little bell so you'll have the notification. So when you subscribe, click the, the little bell so it'll come on when we hop on and have new materials on YouTube. Love you guys so much. I can't tell you how powerful this word is going to be tomorrow morning. Share this with so many people you know that it will be a blessing to, that have strayed away from the things of God a bit. And this will be a good, strong word to bring them back to the voice and the heart of God. Speaking of voice, don't forget to go to hervoice.myshopify.com and don't miss tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, we're going to be back on at 630. I wanted to sleep in a little 30 minutes extra, but Eunice knocked that out the park. I'm going to get you, Eunice, when I get off. And don't forget, Women Risk Takers 1, Women Risk Takers 2. A lot of the teaching that you hear me teaching is coming right out of these two books right here. We can send you the download. And don't forget your free, your free uh, teaching that we're going to email to you, uh, Trusting in the Source. I love you. I love you so much. Until tomorrow, this is Dr. Pat. We're going to go out on Facebook first.